We have friends at Hotel Molokai that we share the bathroom with. It's going to be friendly, you know. And this is their best room. See when the I when oh, the I we can see when the I yeah, great little hammock down there. This is Sunday, June. 21st at Dixie Maru Beach. Beautiful beach. We're going to snorkel here, have lunch. This little picnic table. <laughs> it's not okay for my thingy to run across. Oh. Good to take the cap off the lens. Here, look at it through. That's through a polarized lens. Look at the water. Are you looking at the water? And look at the point, the rock point over there. I will not be with my last one on this trip. That's for sure. Everybody smile. Okay. Hi. Aloha. Crazy mango. Cheese. Mango. 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 <laughs> mango. Mango tango. There you go. They should get spoiled with this. Okay. And then go down and show it to shore and then.
Okay, sweetheart. Oh, my God. Okay, you ready for that? Oh. <laughs> Escape artist. There we go. Thank you. Now I got it. Thanks. That's all I need. Was that one of those? Mother Marion came over with the first Franciscan sisters here to call Papa to serve with all the women and girl patients in the Bishop Home. The Bishop Home is that white furnished building on top of the green trim. The old ruins you see in front of the Bishop Home is the old dining hall as well as the restaurant where came into the home. About three and a half years ago, Mother Marion Zunin got exhumed from her original girl spot here in the Sunday and sent back to Syracuse, New York, where the order she was from. Then to Rome, where the process of her being beatified and going through the canonization ship through St. Paul withdrew. When her remains got sent from here back to Rome, the Pope passed away. When the Pope passed away, all of her paperwork got postponed. Till today, Mother Mary and Pope mm -hmm. still went under the St. Paul process. Throughout the St. Paul process, there's three processes. There's memorable, blessed, and sainthood. Both Father Damien and Mother Marianne have been stuck under the second phase for many of years. Finally, Father Damien has completed the third step to sainthood, and the Pope will proclaim it to the world in October 11th of 2009. What about Brother Dutton? Brother Joseph Dutton is not even in the category right now. Okay. Only Mother Mary and Cole and Father Damien. Not to say any good or bad about the Catholic religion today, but there's a lot of politics involved. <laughs> First, the first step to sainthood was for February 9th of 2009. We're all prepared for the one big spectacular day in Kalapapa and it never happened. Now they're, perspo they're postponing it to October 11th of 2009. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, I didn't. Shit, I had the wind cap on. Do it, do it again. I, I missed. I had the wind cap on. Damn it. <laughs> oh, we were back there on the flat. This is from Kalawao on Monday, June 22. North Shore of Walkai, highest sea coast in the world. Hey, nice swimming down there. 
Jesus. Another tick. It will turn into a tick. This beautiful beach down in Kalapapa. Finally, the sun's coming out. I'm trying to figure out if this is a turtle or a rock. The rock turtle. Rock. We're about the switchback twenty two or three. We're somewhere around switchback number 14 or 15. Okay, that's the beach that we walk by, and then that's where they pick us up. The bleachers are back in the trees on the right. Lighthouse. It's a crater that formed this. There's a peak up here above us. They have guardrails on a little bit of this trail. Wow. views are just earth-taking. Breath-giving. And there's mule dung. We've got a fenced off area with a protected plant. I've seen these in books before, in magazines. Close to the top, I think. Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That is the turtle rock. I'm sorry. Can you see its shell well, sticking out of the ground and its head and its neck? Yeah. Yes, I, mean, I don't know what you're yeah. from below. I'm just big... saying. Okay. I'm just saying. Oh, there's a lay down there. Oh, of course. It's a really beautiful lichen. <laughs> Did you see that? Did you see that one? It's really gorgeous. The phallic rock got laid. <laughs> yeah, they're making offerings. Do you know that? Oh, to the fertility god. Oh, fertility god. <laughs> 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 yes, <in> nine months. <laughs> 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 what position are you planning on getting? 
We're at the lookout for Kawapapa Peninsula in the state park. We're at Purdy's Magnet Farm. Most of you usually think about the trees, they're active 12 months in the year. They produce these nuts only when they fall, 12 months in the year. So normally we are raking, segregating leaves into piles. We're picking the nuts off the ground at that time, but that time would be daily throughout the year. No other tree in Hawaii does that. Produce daily throughout the year. There's probably not too many trees on one hand in the world would do that. Most people have no knowledge of any trees that produce product. 12 months in the year. You guys, since you guys with the Sierra Club, you guys might have some knowledge of a tree that produces 12 months in the year. You guys know of any trees that actually do that? No. Just in general, just from your own knowledge, you know, just travel the world, went to this forest, went to that forest. Any? Pardon me? Lemon. I don't think so, ma'am. No. I don't think so. They might have uh, this and this and this. But uh, they don't produce daily throughout no, the year. No. Okay. Those of you who are joining us, uh, we're gonna kind of show you. This, uh, these guys just coming in. Uh, we just kind of told them where they are. Fifty trees. They're ninety years old, and we're the only farm on the island. The. Uh, okay. I come back. I gotta get this to mom. Okay. Okay. I'll be right back. So, uh, because the tree is unique, we wanted to show you the tree. Okay. So that's what you guys are here for is actually show you up close how the tree does that. We're going to go through everything, the flowers, the infants, the, the whole process of growing. And you'll see for yourself how macadamia trees are able to produce this not year round, 12 months in a year on a daily basis. Besides seeing and learning right by the table in front of us here, you get a chance to taste it as a natural nut, most natural, right out of the shell. So they're crackable, they're edible, right out of the shell. Best thing about the nut, there is no cholesterol in it, zero. Cholesterol is in a natural nut though, okay? natural. We're not talking about canned, processed, chocolate covered. We're talking about right out of the shell. So like most things out of the shell, they're actually very healthy, you know, in terms of that condition. But when the industry, which is on a big island, needed to ship it, shelve it, store it for extended periods of time, they needed to process it. So they cooked it in or roasted it in oils, preservatives, and additives. So three different things that they processed in, but that's what we're going to eliminate, okay? All those three things. Besides the raw kernel, you'll taste uh, up in the counter area close to the building up there. You get a chance to taste it as a roasted nut. We'll call it naturally roasted, meaning no oil, no preservatives, no additives used in the roasting of the nut. But we roasted the raw kernel in the oven without anything at all in it, except for Hawaiian salt, which is a large granule sea salt. Okay, so that is what we're going to taste up in the counter area. So the, the idea of uh, any visitor coming into this farm is a natural look at the trees that we'll show you from, B, from A all the way to Z, the harvest is not on the ground, then you get a chance to see that as a natural nut, raw or roasted, actually a very healthy nut. Because of shelf life, which is about a month, they're not marketed that way, they're not eaten that way. So most people in the world has never had a natural macadamia nut. They've had macadamia nuts, but not a natural form of macadamia nut. So this is what we're dealing with here. So, before I point out the tree, and we're actually going to show you this particular tree, but uh, before I do that, you guys got any questions in general? And, uh, let's start with the very beginning, and again, uh, yeah, you, you can move around. I'm going to point it out. Now, this particular stem up here, at the top portion where my stick is kind of touching, is the first sign indicating the tree will produce these nuts with our buds. Uh, it's actually light green in color. If you can imagine that whole stem being light green in color, like that, would be the first sign indicating this tree, right there, will start to produce these nuts. Uh, there's anywhere from 60, maybe up to 100 or more potential nuts per stem, okay? So each bud going down the stem represents individual nuts, and this particular stem has served off, okay? So it should be about twice as long. Then uh, right below it, actually the bottom portion of this stuff, it started to turn into the flowers, 
Uh, at this time of the year, we're not going to find a lot of flowers on the trees, but we still can find them. So we can show you that there is flowers. And if you can imagine this being white and fluffy like a baby's bottle brush, that's what the flowers look like. Macadamia blossoms also produce honey, which we have. So besides seeing it, uh, you get a chance to taste it in a honey form. Okay? We cannot make the honey because the farm is limited. Now once your flowers ripen, they dry up all the petals, and then they start to form tiny infant nuts like that. So right over there you can see a few nuts surviving the stem. They're real tiny, they're infants. So they actually just got born from the flowers. Okay, so we show you the next stage, the third, the actual nut. And because they're infants, they're very, very fragile. Right above here, I'm kind of touching that nut over here. You can see that the stem is only one left on the stem. Okay, so this wind will be a factor in thinning it out. Uh, right below here, you're going to see it escalated a little bit more inside, right there. So they're larger, but they're, they're babies yet, okay, in size anyway. Back there, you're going to see it escalating in size. There's a couple over here, larger, but they're still far from mature. In front of us, they're getting larger like this and like this, uh, but still not quite matured yet. Yeah, this one that fell down. Uh, this one is getting maybe more mature in size, this stem over here. But over here you can see it even larger in size, okay, size-wise. And then up here, again, very large size. So basically we're trying to show you a tree that has all different stages of growing on it, resulting in 12 months of harvesting, which is done only when they fall. So we're not going to pick them, we're not going to shake them. There's no ripe color store. Can't tell if this nut is a ripe nut. The only thing I can tell from this nut this is a twin or a double. Okay, now there's about 5% out of all the nuts that we harvest would be a twin or a double. But 95% is round, hard, and smooth. So until we husk it, we wouldn't know if they're ripe. And if we're finding a nice brown colored shell, kind of like this one is, brown in color, okay, mm. color wise, this would be a ripe nut. And you can pass this around. Mm -hmm. Did you know this is this a one I picked up on the way. Just for the, 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 the shape of it. Or the shape. shape of it. Okay? But that would be right. Okay? Brown colored shell. Now that takes five to six months to complete it. So the buds being first, the flowers second, infants third, uh, adolescent getting a little bit larger, larger yet in size, mature in size, they fall. And if they're ripe like that, it took it five to six months to complete it. So in a short few minutes that we show you the tree, it really takes five to six months. So this is what we can do for any visitor coming into our farm. We can show them the tree right up close, how they produce 12 months in the year. So instead of just telling you in words that they produce year round, we show you the actual tree itself. So. Would it grow faster if there's more light? No, 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 fast, we don't need fast, we just, fast is not on the agenda, yeah, fast is not on our agenda, yeah, but GMO, baby, you like go talk to Monsanto, they like doing fast, they like doing fast, us guys like go natural, this is the natural process, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter where and what, and just, you know, we don't like alter nature, yeah, too much. Like things happen to the world if we alter nature. You guys trying to save, I hope you guys trying to save some land or something. Yeah. I hope, I didn't look oh, at yeah. your t-shirt, that's why. Right. So we don't like make things go faster if no need. So no, it doesn't go faster. There is a process and the process is 12 months of activity, 12 months of harvesting, and it takes from A to Z, five to six months, five to six months. Okay, timeline, they're like babies. The baby, nine months. You gotta go with the natural thing. You know, I like make them eight months. You know, I like make them seven months. I like make them nine months. Okay, Immature. some things you know, like all at all. Now, uh, before we can crack the nut, we need to dry it. That machine here is our dryer. It'll take us a couple days to dry the nut in the shell. Once it's been dried, then we can crack it and we can get the meat out of it. So, before we head to the table over there, you guys got any questions? The regular nut cracker. So we're gonna use the right tools to do the right job. And this is the right tool, okay? If this holes are not in place. Now we have a machine to crack it, so we're not gonna crack it like this. I'm gonna show you, huh? I'm gonna show you, huh? Let me, let me show you, Let him show. Yeah, okay? Because it has to go inside here. It's on the holding tool. Well, then your finger's gonna be in the way and all kinds of stuff and all kinds of stuff, so 
I just educated you guys. I just educated. Okay? So this is a holding tool. Just holds it in place. Real simple and firm, but gentle. Firm, but gentle. So it is hard, but it's not difficult. Because you got the right tools. Okay? Like anything, you got the right tools, they work real well. If they dry it well, they come right out of the shelf fairly easily. If they're creamy in color, like this one is creamy in color, okay, something like that, it's a good edible nut. Here you go, man. There you go. The creamy is good, okay? Another tool, another tool. So I'm just going to show you this. I'm going to let you guys go on your own, okay? Another tool, and you guys on this side can see it better because you're looking straight at it. So it's a leverage tool, okay? And you guys don't need to look at it, but this, uh, these other tools, the leverage in, kind of grip it in first. Press down, like that. Okay. So all we're doing over here is to give you knowledge that the nut is crackable, the nut is edible. The best thing about this nut, they're actually healthy nuts. Okay. No cholesterol in it. 50% less calories in it than the canned ones. Okay. So help yourself. Try at least one or two or three of them. When you guys done, right where all these flowers are at, you guys work your way up there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's Tuesday early evening at uh, Pu'u Ohoku Ranch. Arrived about an hour ago and we've already got our kitchen going. People are reading books. It's a fabulous place. Got the sound of native drums emanating from the Congo room. <laughs> a spaghetti dinner, a Polynesian pasta crew. That is amazing. What? <laughs> okay, we saw the location. That hit, hit the ground beef. Okay, I'm ready to go to work. I'm very busy. Your cleanup crew. Okay. Later, 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 not right now. Get warm up. Good. Wow, Good that's going to be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, remind me to smile because when I'm focused, I'm like really little. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yes. Excellent job. It's got a spittoon. Be on the cooking show. Oh, don't tell me that. Don't put it on the internet or anything like that. Yeah. That's why I didn't climb on top of the balcony rock because I didn't want to wind up on the internet. <laughs> Sorry. ETA, very close. We're within 10 minutes. ETA, for dinner. Should they start their sound? No, we can't start without you. Yeah, you better not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or I know what to do with this hot water. Estimated time for dinner. Ten minutes. Waiting for this. This is Wednesday, and we're hiking to the Heiau. It's a nice car, but nothing's growing through it. Just the river runs through it. Needs new brakes.
We're at the Heiau now. This is the largest Heiau in the world. Night's dinner. This was the uh, avocado. I timed it. I timed it, but I'm still not confident. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. You miss mix the beer with the dish soap and it's very yeah. Right. <laughs> and then she puts it in her hair. That's how she's got such beautiful. Sorry, yoga master Kelly. <laughs> And our other, our other <laughs> yoga instructor, Annette, <laughs> and our non-yoga Bob. <laughs> so, uh, non-yoga Bob. Ron <laughs> well, is our Mahjong master. Mahjong.
Shouldn't be feeding them. your name you're all coming out of the woodwork look at them On the way up, you find yourself, we call it a ko'o stick, which is a slight kind you can use as a cane, a walking stick. Crossing that river should not be a problem. Okay? Um, so each one of you are going to have to sign this waiver. I only have about six waivers here, so maybe three of you sign one waiver. And then you're going to have to take it along with you, along with this map that we have here that will show you the way to go. It's a pretty easy trail to follow once you found the trail. Okay. <laughs> yeah, once you found the trail. Okay, so I'm going to have these waivers here. Now, some of you also expressed an interest in wanting to do a hike here on the ranch. We have endless miles of hiking here. You can hike anywhere, except we ask that you not do it on Saturday because Saturday there are deer hunters here. Okay, on Saturdays we have two sections that we let hunters go to and it's only usually during the summer that we open the deer hunting and it's for the axis deer. I don't know if any of you have had a chance to see one yet. <coughs> Normally at night they're hanging around here on the lawn. It's the spotted deer. They're a lot smaller than the elk. I think the tallest I've seen maybe stands about this tall. Maybe a little taller for the buck. Okay. So on Saturday, no hiking around because there are hunters, okay? But you can do it today, you can do it tomorrow, all right? Would you have a trail map for the <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Look at that smile, it's so authentic. <laughs> Why eyes? Yeah, look at that. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. 
interesting. It looks like a grasshopper. I'd like to be free to your hand, though. Yo, -o. what's your name? <laughs> I'm gonna interrogate you. Name, rank, maybe and wa number. waterboarded. Does, does that? Does uh... no, 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 no. <laughs> 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 that dreadlocks and red locks. Towards ginger. This is a ginger tree? Yeah. Camera takes too long to do. There's a better one over here. It's a banana. It's a nice one. Good picture there. You want to take a picture of that? Good color on it. Thank you. The flower garden in Hawava Valley. Well, it was covered with uh, jack-o'-lantern cherries or Suriname cherries. And we're following the PVC pipe. the waterfall in Hualaba Valley. It's a group. I don't know where a tea leaf went, but it sank. It's a major waterfall. Fire patrols out here. You guys are getting better every night. Coconut woman. I'll be back. See how you're doing. Okay. She's done great. Yeah. I mean, she had, you know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> We've got a nurse. Yeah. Oh. We got a fire truck. The smoke's gonna shut him down. <laughs>
This is uh, the, the these are the other rooms for the lodge. There's the lap pool and some of the nice furniture in Norfolk Pines. Norfolk Pines. Hello. Hi. We got a nice side stroke. Beautiful. She got the coconut. Yeah. That is nice and thick. <laughs> See if anybody can put the lime in the coconut. I don't want no lime in the coconut. Mix it all up. Nah. Okay, I'm going in to wash it off. We put the lime in the coconut and shake it all up. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Isn't it drink it all up? motion at the ranch to really start planting more natives. Oh, good. Which is really good. Yeah. I love pointing out the natives. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Want. Oh, absolutely. Um, there's a lot of invasive species, which is unfortunate. Uh, you know, this is such a climate for, for growth. Everything loves to grow here and just takes off. So so this is, like I said, the other orchard. We have chickens as well that we free range. Lovely, beautiful eggs. We know. Too. Did you guys have some? No. <laughs> we hear them. Oh, yeah, you hear them, yes. They're, they're quite loud. Um, but that's a chicken, too. Um, we actually just had a hen who had baby chicks, 10 of them. They're really cute. They're really, really nice to have around. Uh, so these are all citrus as well. The avocados are in the back. And lychee, are you guys familiar with lychee? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So, yep, the, that's one back there. They're not bearing fruit right now. They're just starting to, to flower. And one of the reasons why we use that is it's nitrogen really... Nitrogen fixing. That one's not actually. Yeah. The cow peas really high in, oh, with the nitrogen fixing. This one really creates a large amount of biomass. So we're creating a lot more organic matter in the soil up here because it's so depleted. Mm -hmm. um, from what? From, okay, I guess it, probably not everyone heard, but this farm started in 1998, and the original intent behind the farm, the owner really wanted to grow lots of ava, which is kava kava in the mainland. I don't know if, you, if everyone's familiar with it or not, but we'll show it to you right up here. Um, both ava, stay, or the ava stays in the ground for three years before you harvest it, and then we also did a rotation with papaya, which was in the ground for two years. Both of those are extremely high nitrogen requirements. So it took a lot from the soil in those like rotations. It was really difficult on the soil. They never really cover cropped afterwards. So we didn't really replenish the soil. We didn't really build it back. So just recently in about 2000, 2005, there was really a switch in mentality here about growing, not monocropping a lot of ava and just really diversifying the farm and really emphasizing growing the soil. And then the soil will grow the food rather than Brilliant. yeah. So it's a really it's a really good switch for the farm. This is taro. Yeah. So we just try to plant enough to kind of for everybody. cover them too. <laughs> to cover them too. <laughs> so this area, like I said, is going into cover crop for Sudan, and then. This area we just cultivated right back there where the lettuce is, and so we're going to start planting that area along with this top area. With the basil? Yeah. Uh, see me on the name. 
on the earth garden. Hazel and kale. Yep. Um, chard, actually? Chard, that's chard. what it is. Yeah, yeah chard. chard. Um, so it's been really, really hard difficult because it's been raining a lot here recently. Uh -huh. So everything, especially the weed, has just been germinating like crazy. So these guys, do they, they don't migrate? Like What's for the ray, absolutely anything. So cool. It's, we go a little bit like one step further. So do what we do from the Oh, the farm is just part of the ranch. Um, this here here is the farm. Um, I kind of use it interchangeably. Down that lime tree. Oh, okay. Down your secret lines, You could swallow them. No. They, they just pass through. Oh, it's bitter. Found the mother load of strawberry guavas. The most anybody has ever found. Wow. That is amazing. You've got guavas right here on this tree. Oh, it's still Hauser. Did join us on Oh, yeah. Gone. It's in Maui, the west end of the southwest side of Maui, where Lahaina is. And then we're looking over to Haleakala. Where's Ohewe Hua? Kauawe and this is Lanai just at the sunset. Monday, no, <laughs> Saturday, the 27th of June to Onahe. Spectacular view of our ocean side room at the moment. Maui Kai, moon up there.